All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Geopolitics in Conflict Show. Very excited. Uh, I don't know why I'm hyper this morning. <laughs> I didn't have coffee, by the way. Not just yet. FYI for yeah. the record. So, so I'm just excited because of the topic. It, it's it's uh, funny. I just had a an interview in Washington D.C. with an entity over there, and uh, John. I used to talk to him. He was a former mm -hmm. CIA and. And he was this uh, the intelligence, the foreign relations uh, committee in Congress. Wow! So I had a conversation with him, and he was oh, believe it or not, we yeah. tackled one of these issue about uh, NATO. So this is what we're gonna be talking about to you, but not just from the military aspect. There is a lot of dimensions into this, and we'll show you some uh, uh, graphs and so forth to put things in perspective for you to understand that nothing happens in a vacuum mm -hmm. when it comes down to geopolitics. So, so anyway, very excited to see you guys. Please type in where you are joining us from. Like I see Francis Tango. He says yes. hi to you. Oh, hi to you as well. So uh, uh, good to see you all, guys. Very, very excited. And uh, so this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be addressing about where NATO is headed. Yeah. Well, we all know because here is what mainstream media is not telling you is that cracks and and fragmentation exist from within the organization yeah despite what they're putting out there as far as we are united against russians and it's nothing but hypes right you look at now nato is willing to put france under the bus <laughs> well, so okay so this to me is a very interesting topic because it really is highlighting the fact that the the countries inside of NATO, you know, the narrative really yeah. wants you to believe that those countries are they're united, all together. United. They're really, right. They're united yeah. in the front of Ukraine. But the reality is that they are not. Yeah. That every single country, number one, is suffering in some way because of what's happening in the in the, in the in conflict. The conflict yeah. between Russia, between Russia and Ukraine, Ukraine. right? Yeah. And so not only are they all suffering, but they all actually have their own agendas going on here. I think it was much easier. I am so riled up about this. Yeah. I think it was much easier at the very beginning to be like, well, we're all in this together. But as it's gone further and further, as we've entered into years of this conflict, every single country is in a different position. Yeah. Well, that's why it was the statement from the beginning. You fight till the end, till, till the last Ukrainians. Ukrainian. But uh, here is the hard the reality that is not to be disclosed. Do you know that the front lines of Ukraine yeah. are crumbling as we speak? You know, and what this makes sense now mm -hmm. is given what's taking place today. You know what's taking place today? What? Is the visit of Lavrov to China. He's in yeah. China. Yeah. And guess what? He met with President Xi. Yeah. But that, that just that in itself should give you the message guys mm -hmm. for a president meet with the foreign minister right. you grant him the audience right. it shows you two things one is that china is now willing to back down from supporting russia right and two is a reflection of the changes on the global geopolitical landscape yeah. that is moving into a multipolar order managed by those two countries of course the u.s will have to play a role into that assuming it once to play a peaceful role into this. Yeah. Because all this is coinciding with tomorrow, the visit of Fumio Kishida of Japan yeah. coming over to the US. And you know what they just announced a few days ago? Mm. That they're going to be conducting quadruple joint military exercises between Philippines, yeah. Japan, Australia, yep. and the US. Yep. What the heck is this for? Of course, this comes in a reaction to ASEAN statement, yep. ASEAN statements that is pivoting from Washington into China. Like I always say, nothing happens in a vacuum. All those things. Absolutely happen. right. Now, for Europe and NATO, the cracks are becoming more visible. Huge. But there are two main things that we need to pay attention to. The first one is NATO stated now they want to allocate or collect. Uh -huh. Or whatever way, one hundred billion dollars for the next five years. Yep. In support of Ukraine. Yep. For the next five yeah, years. Yeah. By Ukraine, the way. Ukraine won't even make it yeah. to next year. Five they're already years. done. Did you oh know now God. that they are taking women 
Yeah. And the the I think building some centers where they're gonna keep the kids. You separating a kid from his mother or her mother. This is the horrible thing to do because they don't have any soldiers. No, and and I think that that's something people don't understand is Ukraine's yeah. a small country. Yeah, it's not like they it's not like the United States where they have millions and millions and millions and millions of people to pull. Yeah, they don't, and the amount of people who have died in this conflict on both sides, but on yeah. the Ukrainian side, they, you're absolutely right. They yeah. don't have infinite numbers of people to throw at them. No, they don't. There are two other two main other reasons. Also, yes. that shows you. Uh, where NATO is headed. Because you all know, guys, it's nothing yep. new. NATO is a relic of the past. Simple as that. You know, you have two countries. You have the United States and Germany. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? They're sending troops. Yeah. The U.S. is sending troops, our troops. They're going to be stationed in Lithuania. Mm -hmm. In Moldova, I'm sorry. Moldova, yeah. And the German soldiers will be in Lithuania. Yeah. You know. I visited Lithuania way back when I was still in Washington. I stayed in Vilnius. It's a laid back town and mm -hmm. all that stuff. But now it makes you wonder. And the Russians already made it clear. Should those come over? We're we going to consider this as a, a threat to our homeland. And we will take it. Guess what? And I put this in quotes because it's a very, very strategic wording. Mm. We will take the necessary security measures. Yeah. You go translate or interpret this any way you want because what the Russian president meant by this is we will use deadly force should of we course. choose to. Of course. And it's getting to that. And this is where now NATO is becoming this fragmented and it's chaos all over. But again, mm -hmm. you guys been with us. How, how, how long we had the big channel, by the way? Uh, three years. Three years. Three years. You've been years? with no, us I long think, enough. Yeah. So by now you developed that critical thinking to understand where is beneath oh, any action. Yep. Because this is what we're going to get into with why mm -hmm. you see in Europe where it is economically speaking. Yep. And why the U.S. pushed hard into ensuring that we're going to have to do whatever we need to do to prevent yeah. any rapprochement economically between Russia and Europe, especially Germany. Absolutely. Okay, so let's dive into that for a second because, uh, so also guys, I'm thinking about having a segment where we do economic guests. Oh what yeah. You, what do you guys think of yeah, guys, diving uh, yeah, further please. and further into economics? Yeah, please answer. Uh, yeah. answer. yeah, that's Elizabeth's background. It yeah, is. Can I, my, it's not my mine. My degree is global business. Uh, yeah. And so that is, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you guys are interested in that, because to me, Ever, and what I what I want to bring up next is is just the wildest thing, but it is directly related to what has been going on yeah. and partially why I believe personally this has been this has continued. Yeah. Now, granted, I am not an economist. I am just a I am just a very curious about economy person. So yeah. if you guys are interested in having more economic related content and especially guests, let me know in the chat. Okay. So do you want to see a really yeah, interesting let's, chart? Yeah, let's yeah, let's let's start, start with the with chart that? first. Yeah. Okay. Because I like to see it. Okay. So you, you know, charts the charts tell you the story. They tell you if the you story. Know how to interpret You're absolutely them. right. Okay, let's actually let's see start that. with this chart. Let me add it to the stage. Okay, let's Whoa. start. We're gonna start what with this that? chart. So the thing that I want by the to way, by the way, sorry to interrupt. Who who who's the who created the chart? Okay, so this is from this is from Forbes, but there's a guy named Robert Rapier who I think is a very interesting um he is an analyst on gas, oil gas, liquefied Ooh. natural gas. Can we have him um, here? Sure. I would love that. So okay. I'm not gonna show the ad on on Forbes. No, uh, but, no, okay. no, we don't Rapier. endorse Forbes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, we yeah. don't care for that but stuff. But this is here, and I think Robert Rapier has done very interesting analysis in terms of what's happening in oil and gas. Because as we know from, uh, unfortunately, many decades at this point, um, he or she who has the oil is he or she who has the power. So right now I want to look at the liquefied natural gas exports um, up until 2022. So we have Qatar, 
we have Australia and we have the United States. Yeah. And so I want to look at, so the big thing that happened in the United States at this point, when we have this, like, like sort of, sort of this incline over here is fracking. So fracking natural gas was, uh, there's, there's a bunch of natural gas here in the United, in the United States. States yeah. And when they started fracking, um, number one, it was really bad for the environment. <laughs> yeah. But number two, we were able to uh, export a lot, lot, a lot more of, of natural it. gas. Okay. Yeah. What happened when Nord Stream one and two were, were attacked, rendered R useless? Useless. Okay. You know, surprisingly, Surprise. we don't know how that happened. I have no idea how yeah. that happened. Okay. Now I want to share this second chart with you. This is Europe. Wow. Uh, so this is from the EIA, so US um uh, US Energy Information uh, Administration. Yeah. Uh so and this is March 22nd of of last year. So take a look at Europe is actually the main destination for US LNG uh in 2022. Yeah. Okay? So look at how much of it is actually exported wow. to Europe versus how much of it is exported to Asia and the rest of the world. Okay, so why is that important? Russia was a big um, oil exporter, su supplier, oil supplier, and, um, and, and gas. Wh yeah, whether it was natural gas or whether it was oil, they were both. Absolutely, both. they were both. Yeah. Russia was a giant exporter to Europe. In fact, it was a very, very large percentage of their uh, natural gas and also their oil were coming in from Russia. Now. What happened? The U.S. put sanctions on Russia sure. so that no longer so sanctions, and then somehow magically the Nord Streams were no, yeah, what rendered that? useless. Yeah. I don't wow, I don't know how that happened, but apparently that happened somehow, guys. Who stepped in? Who swooped in? and was able to supply yeah. the eu europe the euro the eurozone with uh with lng and then with uh oil and uh, with crude specifically the us apparently swooped in and did that so very interestingly uh the last year set records for us crude oil exports mm -hmm. and europe was the top export destination with 1.8 million barrels a day. So the U.S. sent 1.7 million to Asia and Oceania, but 1.8 million barrels a day to Europe. Yeah. Well, that was the whole reason because, as a matter of fact, this was way back. If you have to go back in history, mm -hmm. you have to go back to the time when Gerhard Schröder used to be the German chancellor. Yeah. And Gerhard Schröder... Uh, uh, has developed a good relationship with the Russians. Mm -hmm. well, well, because he was looking for his country's economic advantage. Yep. And the economic advantage was in cheaper energy. Yep. Because yep. any advancements for a country economically is tied to uh, access to cheap, cheap ener energy. Energy. This is this is why two things in history. This is why Japan lost World War II. Yep. That's why it was defeated. And this is why China has advanced economically. And this is why now is advancing right. its naval assets yeah. to protect. We will be, by the way, uh, releasing a video uh, about uh, this. China's economy. It, it, yeah, it's yeah. tied on many, many multifaceted aspects of it. And the point for the U.S. and Europe, it was because we started to see that trend come in. And Europe, uh, especially the EU, but mainly Germany's economy was moving up. Yes, The companies here in the U.S. were a little bit struggling. And that's when the conversation started as to how we're going to manipulate or how we're going right. to ruin this, whatever. Right. To the point that a few years ago, and I think when we started this channel, I recall there is a video out there. I don't remember the exact date. I, it was Russ and I when we did it. Yeah. And it was about when the U.S. threatened Germany with sanctions over Nord Stream. Yep. That's when yep. it was. And right there, to me at that time, it became clear to me, we are aiming at preventing. Right. And this is what you mentioned. I have a map, a satellite picture. Yeah. You want to see it? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It is a satellite picture. This satellite picture, you know what it deals with? Hmm. This one has to do with the attack on Nord Stream 2 yeah. pipeline. <laughs> yeah. And it shows you where 
all day. Norway played a role into this mm -hmm. behind the scenes. So. Yep. so, and that was the whole reason we never wanted Germany get so close right. to uh, Russia right. economically because Europe was moving up. Anytime you hear the EU, who do you hear about? It's Germany. Germany because yeah. Germany is was the largest economy and it was growing. That's it correct. Was very strong. And very much of that was actually built on the fact that they were getting cheap, cheap very oil cheap. and gas uh, from Russia, Russia. from yeah. Moscow. I just heard from a German person this past weekend mm -hmm. that now they are they're really dealing with, with there is, first of all, here is one thing that it's not disclosed here. Mm -hmm. Did you know that two countries in Europe now are in a recession? Germany right. and the UK. They never disclosed yeah. this one. No, they absolutely are not. And so, so actually, let me dive into Ger uh, Germany for a second yeah. because, because the the more or less the takedown of Germany has been in in terms of economics has been substantial and very very sad to watch. So uh, first of all, I do want to I do want to note that uh, the United States is has become the world's largest liquefied natural gas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, exported in 2023 with obviously Europe as its primary destination, which is what I, what I just explained to you guys. Yeah. So that's huge. So it's not just that it's not just that the Russian oil was taken out of the market. It's who replaced the Russian oil in the marketplace. Market, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We, that's something that's, that's conveniently not talked Happened. about here. I is know. Who replaced that? So if, if the Russian sanctions <laughs> weren't in what? place, yeah. it would be cheap Russian yeah. oil and gas. And I will say that a lot of Europe was built on that cheap oil yeah. and gas. And we're charging them five or six or seven or even eight times right. the price they were right. paying for. It. So that was by design. Let me let me dive into Germany for a second because yeah. you just brought up Germany. So um, Rush. So after Russia, most of uh, Russia's gas was cut off to the EU. So there was an energy crisis, right? So. 40% of uh, the fuel that came from Moscow, 40% mm -hmm. of the fuel came from Moscow, and all of a sudden that was gone. So it's interesting to watch Germany's economy right now. So Germany's population has unfortunately um, taken the brunt of this, right? It's never the government that takes the brunt of it. It's never the ultra wealthy. It's always the population that takes the brunt of it. So I want to talk about the growth in the eurozone versus the growth in in from Russia. Yeah. Uh, so the economic growth. So the IMF. Okay. The IMF. International Monetary yes, Fund. The International yeah. Monetary Fund um, predicts an economic growth in the eurozone of only 0.9% in in 2024 in this year, mm -hmm. whereas Russia they predict a 2.6%. Wow. Growth. They, despite the sanctions. Despite the sanctions. Yeah. So do sanctions work? No, they no. don't. No, they don't. As a matter of fact, they now precipitated into that shift economically on yeah. a global level, especially when it comes down to the financial market. And mm -hmm. we all know where gold is today, right. thanks to the sanctions and thanks to the changes. Yep. Gold that, and Bitcoin. Yeah. And Bitcoin. Where, where the U.S. and NATO embarked on. Yeah. So. But here's the thing. Uh, and by the way, I'm seeing someone here from Czech Republic, Daniel oh, yeah. Bauer. Good to see you. Good to see you. And someone else from Denmark, Martin from Denmark. So I miss Denmark because <laughs> I went to Copenhagen way back, back in the day when it was still Scandinavian countries mm. were very, very now with Finland and Sweden in NATO. They dug a hole, a graveyard for themselves because that's well, here's the thing. Going. I love Europe. Yeah. I'm half Polish. Yeah. I love Europe. Yeah. I and, love Poland. And here's the thing before I forget, while yeah. we're talking about NATO. Yeah. Did you know there is a talk behind the scenes to establish military bases in Finland on Finland soil? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, which is very but anyway, that's another well, uh, a discussion on its the own. The big fear, David, I think for everybody is as as the NATO countries are escalating this. Yeah. First of all, why? Yeah. And and second of all, and I and I think that there's a really big discrepancy between the populations of most of these countries, countries and their governments because you are seeing mass protests all over Europe. You are seeing the population saying, "What are we doing? What this is this is causing us to suffer. Yeah. Our our prices of basic necessities are going it's up going and up. Europe gets 
cold. Part of the United States gets very, very cold yeah. also. Um, but Europe gets cold, yeah. cold. A lot of it gets very cold in the winter. And so you're starting to see, I think, a very big gap forming between the governments of countries and not a, not all of the countries, yeah. but the governments of countries and their people actually starting to speak out and saying, mm. what what are we actually doing well, here? What are we paying yeah. for? The Germans, Germans are, I don't know about the British people yet, but still uh, Britain is, is, is sinking economically. They're just not disclosing this. I mean, you remember, I, and I didn't mention this before. I'd be happy to repeat it again. Uh, I had a chance to read up, uh, uh, to read, uh, it was a leaked memo inside the Pentagon. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know, I shared this with you or not. But, uh, but anyway. What is it? And uh, then I'll know. It was a way, it was recent for last, oh, okay. last about three and a half months or four months. Okay. Anyway, it was leaked. You know, mm -hmm. And it was intended to be circulated just within the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And it was about the uh, the readiness of the British forces. Oh, and you know yeah. what it was? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. says that if British, mm -hmm. which by the way, this is the one pushing for this narrative about we're going to fight the Russians now. You know what that memo said? What? If British get involved in a in a in a in a in a one to one conflict with Russia, they will run out of ammo in one afternoon. Yeah, yeah I saw that. One, yeah, afternoon. one afternoon. One afternoon. And yeah, what the heck with Britain? It's just escalating. For they can't afford it. Yeah. They cannot afford it. As a matter of fact, the Russia will flatten London in no time before the even yeah. the British will respond. My point in all this. Why NATO is pushing this narrative about we're going to have to defend Ukraine, defend what? Ukraine for what? Yeah. You know, Ukraine is done for. You know, now that you're looking at yeah. two main elements inside Russia, you know who they are? You're looking at Wagner yeah. and you're looking at Chechens. Yeah. They are joining forces. You know how fierce fighter the Chechens are? Yeah. yeah. Well, guess what? If the, Once they join, you know what they aim at? Is to take over uh, uh, Kharkiv. Mm. Once that yeah, yeah. it's done, and Bakhmut, of course, once that's done, yeah. you will be looking at only a few miles from Kiev. Yeah. Once you do that, Ukraine becomes a landlocked anyway. Yeah. So, And now the arguments that they are saying, they, Ukraine and NATO saying, oh, yeah, we could we could think about the Russians returning the, the territory. I ain't going to happen, is wishful no. thinking. It is not going to happen because to Russia, they can't trust anymore. Oh, no, no, and they saw, and, and for them, you will think they will learn from history. Yeah. Just go back to Georgia. What took place in Georgia? Did yeah. Russia return Abkhazia and South Ossetia? No. no. Mikhail Shakashvili, the former president, the idiot president, mm -hmm. who was, by the way, educated here in the U.S., you know, had to live with the tail between his legs Yeah. because he yeah. was... The embarrassed beyond belief. You know why? Because he was defeated in a matter of one week and health. Yeah. No. And this is why, <laughs> you know, we can have, yeah, uh, the fear of, of NATO, you right. know what? The fear of NATO is not about Russia. It's not. A, the fear about NATO is from within yeah. that the population will rise up and said, hell with this. We're done with this yeah. one. This is where the fear inside NATO, yeah. and that's why you see this coordination of controlling the narrative. Yeah, you know that that's to me straightforward. We even now seeing it in Brazil, mm -hmm. which I was shocked to hear about what the their Supreme Court judge is doing. Mm. Oh yes, Some oh my, stuff, yeah. oh unbelievable! I read the stuff. I read the notes that Elon Musk sent about. Yeah, okay. they wanted now to sue Elon Musk and charge him with. Uh, conspiracy or something like that but anyway this is where the problem in nato nato's relies nato realized now you can't defeat the russians it's a it's it's a fact well and and it's very interesting because it's yeah. like how many hundreds of billions of dollars have to be because it's kind of embarrassing don't you think like yeah. hundreds of billions of dollars have been spent more is going to be spent and Ukraine's not winning. And now we just, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now we are allocating more financial aid. Yeah. You know, our our esteemed Congress or our corrupted <laughs> Congress. You know what I will do with them as punishment? I do know. Yeah. What we, do you guys think? Am I wrong? We will be on the yeah. next. Yeah, I can't say it here, but please, please, <laughs> please put in the chat box. Uh, am I wrong in the punishment that those corrupted leaders deserve? And you know which one I 
my preferred I, I we do and if you guys don't know for those of you who don't know what it is uh we will be on the next platform which we cannot name but we will be on the next platform next after this and uh if you don't know what platform that is put it in the chat and somebody who does know respond um i you know i i love it when you guys talk i yeah. i see yeah look at look at that look at that look at that chanel is saying yeah. after church you're absolutely <laughs> correct Kara Kulak agrees with me. Uh -huh. That's the way I look at it. Well, it's not that I am heartless because there are some who judge that way. No, sure. it's a difference between a right and wrong. And especially when it comes down to public figures, mm -hmm. once you become a public figure, it's no longer about you. It's yeah. no longer about your interests. It's about the welfare of the right. constituents you represent. Right. But I will say this. I think fundamentally one of our biggest flaws is the fact that our government officials can take money from somebody else. So if you look at the way that our Congress is set up, who is paying them? So if they enter in being, you know, net worth, whatever yeah, yeah. it is, and they leave and their net worth is in the hundreds of millions of dollars, who is paying them? It's not us. It's not the no, people. No. Right. And so whoever pays you is your boss. Right. Like no, if, if you if you work for if you work at a company, whoever your boss is, who pays you. Right. Your allegiance is to who pays you. And so instead of having an environment where the the only way that they're allowed to get money is by being paid by their constituents. Yeah. Because imagine that. Right. Imagine you didn't get to be a hundred millionaire by being in Congress. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine that you had to stick to your hundred thousand something dollars. One hundred fifty. One hundred fifty thousand dollars for, for House of Representatives. One hundred seventy-five for senators. See, let's say you had to stick to that salary. Yeah. To me, you would attract a different kind of person. Somebody who wasn't driven by money. Somebody who couldn't really be corrupted because there was no corruption to be had. Yeah. You would have a completely different type of person drawn to that job. Instead of looking at that job and saying, this is my ticket to being really, really obscenely wealthy, wealthy yeah. which is a different personality type that's drawn to that. Now you see why I turned down I when know, I was approached. I, I was approached to run for Congress mm -hmm. and I turned it down. I but like, I will say this. I say this to you guys almost every time you guys go be wealthy. Power is with the wealthy people, people who are resourced. If you cannot figure out what to the whether you can eat for dinner or not, yeah. then you are not going to be able to focus on bringing good to people. You go be wealthy. You go be powerful. You guys are the ones that we need in power. Uh, let's get back to another point that we need to talk about NATO. <laughs> Given the statements by Emmanuel Macron, uh, when he's we're gonna send the troops. <laughs> you first know, which, of all, what, what troops? It, excuse it, it, me. It, it was pathetic. Excuse me. It was pathetic for him to yeah. even state something like that because his twenty thousand or whatever he's sending will be wiped out in no time. I think it was Colonel McGregor that said. Uh, I think it was Colonel McGregor. Yeah. It was either Colonel Ray or Scott Ritter that said that he doesn't even have 20,000 troops to send. He's got like 7,000 troops. Yeah, to they send. don't have I much. remember seeing that they on don't an have interview. Much that. But the point, my point for all that, why I'm saying this, thinking because they wanted to take the lead as far yeah. as we are the spokesperson for Europe. Because when you think about the Atlantic yeah. relations, yeah. you know who usually you hear. Germany, France, and the UK, the rest mm -hmm. of them. That's why I don't understand 32 countries in NATO. What are they doing? What are they contributing? What are they bringing to the table? Yeah. So, you know, Germany increased its military spending now for the first time uh, to meet the NATO requirements. Yeah. It's interesting because you know who's calling for that? Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, because they're concerned. That's interesting to me. Well, that's why they went ahead and said we need to generate a uh, hundred billion dollars for the next five years because yeah. they are concerned. They, NATO, mm -hmm. is concerned that if Trump wins the election, which yep. even with Trump himself is not a qualified for the position anyway. Uh, there, there are no leaders in America. Let yeah. just let me put this flat out. I, I, I'm not going to vote for him because who, who are you going to vote yeah. for? No, I, it's nothing. the illusion of so, choice. It's yeah. not really so it right. becomes the issue for France is because, you know, if you recall history, what did Charles de Gaulle? You all remember, you all know who Charles de Gaulle is, the former general. What did he do? He pulled that out of NATO. Mm -hmm. It's because he said, well, 
America doesn't live here. We live here. Right. And he was right. Which is you know. true. That is true. So France now, they've been calling ever since for mm -hmm. establishing a European security entity that is independently from the U.S., but it was nothing but hypes. Well, who's they couldn't fund it. Well, that's Maybe why we fund the United States. Who's gonna yeah. fund it? We funding it so we can keep control. Yeah. And this is why you have over thirty thousand troops in Germany. Yeah. What are we doing with thirty thousand troops in Germany? Right. But to go back to my point about France, I think France realized the the uh, the trajectory. It's not to its favor, mm -hmm. for one main reason. Yeah, you know what that reason is? What being kicked out of Africa with nothing, oh, yeah. absolutely, with Which nothing, and who long past yeah. due, and who replaced it? Russia yeah. in in uh, in Burkina Faso, yeah. in Niger, and Mali. Yeah. So and France was taking advantage of the resources. We all know you. Yep. You all know about Africa and so I forth. I have a big problem with colonizing countries. Big big. Well, problem. yeah. You if you if you go and help and build the infrastructure, right. whatever, that's great. But that's not colonizing, right? Colonizing no. is going in, taking whatever resources, whatever the the population that was living in is like. You know, this this is something that is interesting, but that gets yeah. forgotten often. Remember when history books used to say that Columbus discovered America? <laughs> he discovered a continent where there were millions of people, people living already, on it. Already here. But yeah. he, don't worry, guys. He discovered it. No, he didn't. There were people here. Yeah. He took it from them. Yeah. And the same arguments can be made about World War II. Mm. Now, here's a question for you guys. To those who know a little bit of history, uh, you know about history. Who won w World War II? Please type in in the chat box. Oh, I would love yeah. to read this. Your answer on this: Who truly won yeah. World War II? Yeah, it's That's because the, the books are, are just you know manipulated. Well, I think it depends on what country you're in and whose textbook you're reading. Yeah, yeah, and right there. Here's Kate yeah. Stone, Stone. You wrote Russia, Karakulak, Russia, yeah. Los yeah. Delgado, Russia. Yeah. And I'm seeing Russia, Hamad City, Soviet Union back then. YT, Russia, Kenneth, Russia. You guys got it. But the idea that the history books have been manipulated, you know. You know, I used to teach. Mm -hmm. you know, I teach government. And one of the books that I found out way back in the history, when it comes down to the history of Texas, and you know what it was? Mm -hmm. It was manipulated because if you only know that the state of Texas belonged to Mexico, he was never American. Yeah. And those books were... And thank God yeah. for some honest professors. They went to the Capitol yeah. and requested that those books will not be published because it's falsifying historical record. Mm. And I was talking to uh, good for them. Uh, I was talking to an individual who happened to be a professor of history yeah. and of Mexican uh, descent mm -hmm. and understands the ins and outs of it. And he and I would sit down and talk and all that. I mean, I was like, yeah, he can't be doing that. The yeah. same thing I'm saying here, guys. History tends to be manipulated when there is an opportunity for it. That's why you have yeah. to be aware of what you yeah. read, confirm, check out your stuff and all that. So history for History is written by the winners, David. Yeah, well, that's what history happened in World War II, which victory. wasn't right. Yeah. What happened to what the Russians did? Yeah. Yes, I know the history of Russia and Poland is not pretty. It's pretty bad. It's but let's bad. let's let's really put put the dots where they belong. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for the Russians getting involved, yeah, what would happen Poland at that oh, time absolutely. with the Germans right there, absolutely. or even the U.S. Will the absolutely. U.S. even get involved? And and it does not excuse what they did later. Okay, no, it does no, 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 not no. excuse what no. they did later. However, that is a reality. That is a fact. Yeah. And this is now what I see. And again, you all know, guys. I think far ahead down the road. Mm -hmm. This is what I see coming to the Asia or the Pacific theater. Yeah. This is what I see coming. And how that conflict is going to sort of be uh, swirl in a way mm -hmm. that is going to be manipulated and later on. It is very interesting it's that, you know, David, you and I, uh, you, can't, there's, you can't trust legacy media. Here no, 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 no. And it's interesting to look at the publications that are in Asia specifically yeah. about this conflict. They are oh, yeah. shockingly more balanced. I'm not saying that they don't have their own air of agenda, yeah. but they are shockingly more balanced about this conflict. Yeah.
Well, I, I do read up on both ends of the Atlantic, yes. on both sides of the Atlantic, Me and too. and and even in Asia. And I can. Mm -hmm. This is what I do for how I get my uh, information is to read the analysis from different entities. And but I do see how the Western one, how it's uh, narrated, and sort of to to take you on a path that is not the right one as far as where the truth is. So. Yeah. So, but this is just to go back to France. This is where oh, the yeah, issue yeah. with France. France now is realized being kicked out of, uh, as a matter of fact, believe it or not, I just read yesterday or the day before that now France is reaching out to Morocco. Mm -hmm. Why Morocco? It's because Morocco was a French colony. Yeah. You know, they're reaching out to them after the, their relations get strained. But, well, it's not because they care. It's because yeah. they are losing ground in everything. Morocco, at least when it comes down to agriculture, Morocco is uh, is a good country when it comes down to produce whatever. Mm -hmm. Morocco is number one in citrus in the world, whatever. Yeah. All the produce goes to Europe. Mm -hmm. And France was very concerned yeah. that now Morocco, because Morocco is moving a different direction altogether. Where with are they moving? Well, moving in the sense of building up a pipeline with, with Nigeria. Oh, because yeah. Where that's going to go. Yeah. You yeah. look at about uh, uh, the relationship because what France did regarding the Western Sahara and all that stuff, oh, yeah, which is yeah. a, a touchy subject for Morocco at that point. But, but just to give you guys an idea uh, is that France is realizing now that is being thrown under the bus. Yeah. Even NATO don't care. And Stoltenberg... Yeah. He doesn't give a damn about anybody oh because he's God. concerned about his position. He wants to stay in. There are two individuals that I I was informed that those two have their eyes on the Secretary General of NATO. You know who they are? Mm. One of them is Mike Root yeah. of Netherlands. And you know who the other? Ursula yeah. van der Leyen. Ursula van der Leyen. The liar. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't let her be yeah, it. No. The, the, those are the two. They aim it. But, yeah. but because here is how it works for NATO. The more you push for conflicts and as a secretary, the more you are uh, 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 sort of uh, yeah. accepted. And of course, we have a say into that mm -hmm. because we control the budget. Yeah. And the military aspects of it is controlled by a four-star U.S. general. Yeah. Always. They will never be a British or French general or mm. Turkish or whatever. It will always be U.S. That's what I'm saying. Pow money equals power. You guys go be wealthy. Be the powerful people. I will say this until I am blue in the face. Yeah. Well, it's the, it's the reality of it's it. It's the reality. Yeah. And this is where France now realizing that because their statements thinking that the NATO is going to come and support that statement by sending truth. There is no country in NATO that is willing now to send the troops to Ukraine. Right. Yeah, sending them to Lithuania or Moldova yeah. or whatever. Yeah, we always do troops. And when I was in, 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 in uh, Vilnius, Lithuania, mm -hmm. uh, that is back then, there were some U.S. troops there, small portion, yeah. whatever. But, but as far as going to Ukraine, they will be wiped out. Right. I mean, you look at even production-wise. Did you know we're running into a problem right now in the U.S. regarding ammunition? Oh, hugely. Okay, yes. Talk the, about the, that. You know, that's really it's important. because what do you need for the ammo? Mm. What do you need to produce that? You need gunpowder. Yeah. Where is gunpowder coming from? Is it China. Yeah. And China stopping the supply. Yeah. It's stopping that. And... And this is a huge thing. So when it, ammunition production here in the United States, Russia produces, I think it's like four times more. So like three or four times more ammunition. I had the numbers like a couple yeah. of weeks ago, but yeah. basically it was like Russia was producing three or four times more ammunition than the U.S. The US. was yeah. producing. I'll give you one example also about tanks. Yeah. We produce, this is the last uh, uh, reading I did. We produce about one tank for almost, it takes us 100 days mm -hmm. to do that. You know how many Russia produces? I don't know how many. About 10. Wow. In the same time frame? Same time frame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
because tanks there are a lot uh, involved. Yeah, absolutely. Let alone the performance of. Yeah. I saw the images, which, by the way, wasn't disclosed here in the West. I didn't see them here. Oh, in the of West. those leopard tanks that were. That's like... one. Even the Abram oh, tanks. Oh, the oh, yeah. They were destroyed. Destroyed. And Russia now is putting in the field yeah. some advanced one because mm -hmm. Russia's preparing. There's something big is going to be coming in yeah. about a month and a half or so. Why? Because we're moving into the end of spring, summer, the dry mm -hmm. land. It's going to be now. And Russia is going to move forcefully yeah. and take care of whatever they take care of. NATO is realizing. NATO is realizing that uh, if, if we bark so loud, we're going to scare the Russians. Turns out to be uh, when you bark too loud, yeah, that means you're just barking. Yeah. Uh, there is no... Yeah, but also the conflict in, in Ukraine exposed the vulnerabilities of NATO yeah. as a whole. And makes me wonder, as an observer, as one watching from outside in, yeah. what are the 32 countries for? Right. What for? And especially when you have countries like Montenegro, part of NATO. Yeah. Uh, you know, countries that it's I have a not, beautiful country. Yeah, I have nothing against them. It's just yeah. what are they contributing to? Well, I, I sort of think that that's like a show of numbers. Right, so that's it's like, all oh, it is. Look, yeah, look at how big we are. We have all these com these countries that are involved. Yeah, but I will say it's it's the what we've heard actually out of Russia and out of China recently is that they know how bad things are here in the United States, and I think all of the major governments around the world are looking at the United States and asking how long can this continue? How sustain, long can the U.S. Yeah, sustain, sustain the way that it is? And so I think it's an interesting set of conversations coming up among world leaders yeah. because in a sense, it's a matter of time. And I wish that that weren't true because we're on the ship. I always say this, we're on the sinking ship here in the United States. And if we can bail some water out and if we can keep it from sinking, fantastic. But our foreign policy and our domestic policy has been so bad yeah. over decades and decades now yeah. that, that the United States is in bad shape and everyone around the world can see it. And, you know, here at home, you know, Biden's coming out and he's like, well, we did it, guys. Our economy's great again. Can't you tell? Can't you guys tell how much I've done for the economy? Yeah. It's sad. Fantastic. Very sad. Yeah. Okay, well, that's its own. That's its yeah, own yeah, yeah. showboating, right? That's its own. You but know, the idea, me again. You, know, you know, to me, what saddens me the most is that you got a leader that is lying. And, that, and that's what saddens like, me. Like, the most. it's not even. It's not even hard to, to go to the grocery store, right? Go into any big city. The, it is a lie. And so other countries are watching the problems that the yeah. United States has with immigration, with our education system, with inflation, healthcare. whether it's with health, with healthcare. I they're watching it. us have the, they're watching our food be basically corrupted and sold out. Like they know that this, you know, the stuff that's in a box of cereal here in the United States is different than in Europe. They know that it's different, right? Yeah. They know. And so it, this is, it's, it's like a matter of time. And, and in a way, I think they're biding their time until the U.S. crumbles from the inside out. And how did Rome fall? Exactly. From within. From, from within, within yeah. not from without. Yeah, yeah. There, is a, there is another point I want to mention here before we, uh, we, if we can later on answer a question or two. Oh, yeah. If, we'll, later we'll on, later on. Question. But, I, but it's still another key point. Uh, and I give, uh, let, let me see here. Because, uh, funny, I was about to talk about it, and I mean mm -hmm. it. Uh, it's from Martin. You put, David, can you maybe elaborate on the less known motives behind the Ukraine war, namely BlackRock? Ooh. Yeah, it is It is a good point. Yeah. And I was about to talk about it, but not that one. I was mm -hmm. about, because I like to give credit with yeah, credit yeah. to. But I was going to talk about nation buildings. Yeah, Nation yeah. building has always been one of the mantra. When we go in physically, and I remember the one in, in Iraq, the one in Afghanistan, we tried to uh, do this in Asia as well. It was always about this one in Ukraine is slightly different mm -hmm. because the arrangements have been made prior yeah. to this that you flatten the country, right. you get in yeah. into nation building right. by having an entity like BlackRock Right. Get involved in it. Right. We've done it before, but look, nothing gets built. Yeah. I am here to tell you, nothing gets built. 
what what gets done into that is the transfer of money yep so the allocation because you know what's going to happen with this nation building is going to be now an international conference down the road donations for rebuilding yeah. and nothing's going to be rebuilt i saw with my own eyes in iraq yeah i saw with my own eyes in afghanistan when i was there well you know who's rebuilding iraq yeah china, china. yeah they are china it's this not is, the us yeah this is why back then when i was yeah. still there uh, the Iraqi government gave Chinese a contract in uh, one of the oil fields, and we were livid. We were livid as to, you know why? Because the Iraqi government yeah. asked Exxon to leave. Yeah. And we were like, what? They're like, yeah. So we're the one who fought there. <laughs> yeah. We're the one who spent blood and money. But again, it was for the wrong reasons. Yeah, we weren't supposed to be to be there to begin with. There were no weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. Turns and out, and I argued. I really argued in one of the way back. Yeah, send the note that, sir, you do not want to go in. Right. If you only know the history of that part of the world, let alone what you're gonna do to the geopolitical landscape, is you're gonna turn it upside down, paving the way for Iran because you now eliminated another enemy at that yeah. time. Uh, because there was both Iraq and Afghanistan were at that time enemies of, mm -hmm. of, of Iran. Then I said the changes on the geopolitical landscape is not going to bode well for the United States long term. You know what the answer I got? What? Oh, don't worry about it, Mr. O. We're going to go quick, liberate Baghdad and get out. I said you go in. You are staying in for a minimum of 15 years, right. if not longer. And quite frankly, what did liberate Baghdad mean? Mean. Man, well, yeah, I didn't mean it, anything. You know what I mean? Liberate it from to who? Yeah. Who uh, are you gonna liberate it to? Give it to them? Yeah. That's not and still happens. today, you know, we still have our forces that, that the Iraqi government has asked the US yeah, to you leave. need to leave. To leave, absolutely. It's their country. Yeah, they can and what are we doing there? What are we doing with the basis? And this right. is one of the things that we always think. I know we are not just presenting the problems. There are solutions, and, and yeah. I'll be happy to talk about one right now. Yes, please. We'll talk about, for example, how you can manage mm -hmm. the spending of the military for the U.S. Fantastic. Well, let's start with one. The first one will be eliminate the foreign bases because 850, 856 or 57 mm -hmm. base, do the math calculations. It takes $1 million a yeah. month yeah. for electricity just to run this. Yeah. So get that out, shut down, close those, bring back the the uh, the U.S. soldiers back home here because soldiers are to defend the homeland, yeah. not to go to uh, some far land. Second thing, once you do that, you're going to cut down from the, the spending budget of mm -hmm. the Pentagon. Yeah, Pentagon does not need to have an $860 billion spending. What for? Right. Then you get that money. Is that rain? It's rain. Oh, Guys, that's it's one. dark in here because it is storming. Storming here. Storming. Well, as long as we still have connection yes, here. Then the second thing, out. you take that money out and you allocate it in dealing with the crumbling infrastructure. Oh, absolutely. Yes. You start with yes. that. Yes. A absolutely. good infrastructure will allow the facilitation of transportation. Yeah. Trucks will be to go in, yep. deliver the goods. Everybody's working and so forth. Yeah. The more you generate from that, because we pay taxes, even though under the law, we're not supposed to. There is nothing in the U.S. Constitution that says we have to pay taxes, yeah. but we pay it anyway. Yeah. So you do that. Then you start to focus on the education system. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do that? Is by ensuring you have qualified teacher and yeah. you have a good curriculum. And you pay them well. well you take care yeah. of your teachers. Yeah. And this is where it all starts. Yeah. But but to keep, you know, those are basic. The government knows, yeah. but they won't be willing to do it because the will of the people is not strong enough. Yeah. Till American people scream louder and descend to the streets yeah. peacefully, peacefully and peacefully. ask for the immediate change. And, and among those, of course, I put a damn term limit on those members of Congress yeah. because corruption or... Get rid of lobbyists. No, or do the punishment that I am suggesting well, on a Sunday afternoon yes. after church, yes. right there near Congress. <laughs> Line them up.
Yes. So. Well, and and if you want to know what that is, we will be on yeah, the I next go, platform yeah. in a few minutes after we end this. And if you don't know what platform that is, ask in the chat. And somebody who does know, please respond back to them. Yeah. All right. Let's answer one question here or two, if they are okay, or we can answer them on the other platform. Um, Whatever answer, you guys want. What would you like? Yeah. Let's answer maybe one here, and then okay. we're gonna switch over to the other platform. Yeah. Um. You know, I think so. We guys, we have an interview with Gerald Salente, who is the founder of the Trends Journal. Yes. Coming out on Thursday. It is very, very, very interesting. He is very, he's very strong in global economics because like I said earlier, nothing happens without economics. I, my, my husband showed me a really funny video the other day and yeah. it was, it was a, it was a comedic video huh? and it was, uh, it was a guy talking about, um, you know, who, what, why do we have all these bases around the world? The world. Well, Okay, so to protect trade, right? To protect our trade interests, to protect mm. trade routes, right? Like that's why we have these bases is to protect our, our trade routes. Well, who is our biggest trading partner? China. China. <laughs> so who are we protecting our trade routes from? From yeah. China. Yeah. Why do we yeah. need to protect our trade routes with China from China. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. We yeah. don't. You're right. They have active interest in getting their goods to the United States. We have actress active interest in making sure they get here and that they get our goods. We don't need to defend that. That's true. Um, that is true. Okay. All okay. right, let's see if there is one. If not. Uh, uh, Question from Timeline Dunkley. Will yes. North Korea be in BRICS soon? I don't see that happening yet. Mm -hmm. I don't see that. No. As a matter of fact, uh, now that Russia lifted the sanctions on North Korea. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Big deal. That's its own show uh, and it's on right. But there are those who say, yeah, you'll get North Korea. That might end up being better than India. You know, North Korea is a really interesting. But it's very, uh, North Korea is very different. You're oh talking God, about so very, different. very different as yeah. far as, you know, because you think about the economy. To me, it's always thinking in terms of what economic yeah. assets a country is going to bring. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. I, I know someone absolutely. one time commented that I do not like India and I do not like Nigeria oh because God, I no. expressed. No, it has nothing no. to do with that. It has to do with the reality is what those countries are bringing to the table. And BRICS, we'll have to be very careful moving forward. Yeah. You know, there are about 80 countries on the list now waiting. Right. You can't admit all the 80. No. Yes, I know. That means the whole global south, which will be a reflection of the new geopolitical order. Right. But it doesn't work that way. Because you do that, you create this chaos inside, your credibility and right. your strength on the global stage for which the organization block has emerged will be defeated. Yeah, you're you know? absolutely yeah, right. That's the way right. I see it. Because here's the thing. To me, if I were advising BRICS, yeah. I'll say reach out right now to Indonesia and Malaysia mm -hmm. and just start a conversation. Yeah. I'm not saying you admit it right away. Well, start Indonesia a conversation. Indonesia is a large economy. I mean, it's, it's indeed, not China, indeed, right? But, but in Asia, economy. it means in a Asia lot. Yeah. yeah, you start with that. You start the conversation with North Koreans. Mm -hmm. You know, Argentina, we saw what happened. Now I even heard that the uh, the uh, what's his name the jokester uh, Malay I love it. have your Malay yeah is changing his position. Well, he came in with a really I know direction. now he's flipping yeah. because he saw the reality, but it's too late because the problem with all that yeah. is each time you have a new president, they can just flip Shit, quickly. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. BRICS will have to ensure that admitting countries, the likes of North Korea, which I am sure it will contribute to a degree, but on what yeah. capacity? No, for sure. Now, when it comes down right. to military stuff, yeah, North Korea can contribute to that. Yeah. But who's helping North Korea with that? China and Russia. Yeah. So you're going to have to think. What yeah, other they're assets? already in. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's my point. So that's the way I see it. Yeah. If BRICS wants to play a global role, on the economic stage yeah because we're talking about a global south here we're talking about half of the world population right we're talking about more than more than yeah. that about 75 oh, well, yeah, percent yeah but we're also talking about can this compete yeah. with the eu for example or g20 yeah well i look at now where asean is headed 
I look at now where BRICS is headed. Yeah. But again, without that strength, when I say strength, I am referring to the ability to have your effective policies implemented the right time, the right place with the right player. Absolutely. I agree. Other I agree. than that, uh, BRICS will be just... Uh, a name yeah but that's You're about absolutely it right. and and i think that that's a good point that bricks kind of is in a precarious situation it right is now. they really need to it, bricks is either going to become something or, or not not yeah and uh their choices right now are what will lead to it becoming something or yeah. not yeah and having a dead weight yeah it's not gonna it's not gonna bode well right and and the united states yes the united states is still strong but you cannot stay a strong yeah. global power with so many problems yeah. domestically yeah. and it's it's interesting do you think and we'll talk more about this on the next platform that we're about to be yeah. on but i am curious as to what your opinion is depending on what happens in the next election i do not we're here in the us here in the united states yeah I do not personally see things getting better, regardless of who ends up. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's because president. it's the fundamentals, the right. fundamentals of what American system is all about are, are crumbling. Yeah, that's crumbling. why. Absolutely. That's why it doesn't matter who the president is, even if you got a good guy, hypothetically, which right. we don't have any. It, it's it's the it's the structure of the system that is crumbling, and that you can't fix it with election. That has to be teared down and rebuilt. That's right. the way I see it. So while I'm thinking about it regarding mm -hmm. bricks, because it came to mind, I remember having a conversation with someone and mentioned to me, will Japan consider joining bricks? I cannot. Have yeah, imagined. believe it or not. I cannot. The same imagine. argument, the same question I was asked it, will yeah. Australia consider joining? I cannot imagine. But there is a problem with that. Yeah. You know, be on both sides of the fence, kind of trouble. Mm -hmm. Or troubling, that is. This is the same thing where India is. India yeah. is on both sides of the fence. Right. So that's why I don't see Japan and yeah. Australia right now. Um. Anyway, guys, we have a video with Gerald Salente coming up on Thursday. A brilliant, brilliant guy. He brings a lot of very good, I think, solutions, yeah. especially for the United States in terms of how to turn that ship around. But really great interview, mm. guys. Check it out. And I really like to support his cause. I would too. I would his too. His cause is, and I'll be happy to play a part in it. Yeah. If he ever extend the invitation, whatever, yeah. I'll be happy to. Because what he's thinking about is good. Is good not only just for the U.S. <laughs> For a global peace. For the global peace, yeah. yeah. So, that's that's why. Yeah. I, mean, I truly I, would love I do to too. Something. I really I really resonate a lot with what he has to say, and it was actually really nice to interview him because it made me feel like all of us are not alone. Yeah. That there are actually a lot of people here in the United States and around the world. No, they are good people. That really, there. really they want people. peace and don't want to continue the cycle of war and the next empire yeah. and the next fall of the and continue the process a lot of people don't want that yeah. anymore yeah so. all right guys well we hope to see you in about five or ten minutes whenever that time is we'll yeah. be there soon as soon as we're done here and we thank you for being here we thank you for your kind support i know today we didn't wear the merchandise today. we did not yeah. but we, it's okay. we will do it next time <laughs> so anyway we appreciate you and we look forward to seeing you soon as always prepare yourself for changing world order until next time Bye-bye.